Hello, my name is Casey, and I live in Alaska, where we have excellent aurora views during our winter months. However, it's not just pretty lights, as there are some complex processes occurring. Let's check it out. Long ago, cultural groups believed myths of spirits in the sky, but in 1619, Galileo hypothesized that these mysterious lights were produced by sunlight reflecting from the atmosphere and named the phenomenon Aurora after the goddess of dawn. Later on in the early 1900s, a Norwegian physicist named Christian Birkeland set up an experiment to further understand the Aurora. He placed a charged sphere into a vacuum chamber to simulate Earth in space. Then he directed a stream of electrons, which are small negatively charged particles, towards the sphere. This produced a glow around the poles, much like what our Earth does when we have auroral activity. Using Birkeland's research, we are able to determine three main components to create the aurora. We need charged solar particles, Earth's magnetic field, and Earth's atmosphere. First, we're going to start off with our sun. In addition to the light and heat that it produces, it also gives off a stream of charged particles called the solar wind. The surface of the sun is always changing as its magnetic field twists the loops on its surface. Because of these twisting movements, things like coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, and solar flares occur, which pushes the solar wind outward from the sun. From the sun, some of those particles make their way towards Earth. As they get closer to Earth, our magnetic field pushes away a lot of those particles. However, closer to our poles, our magnetic field is bent, and that allows the solar wind to enter Earth's atmosphere. Most of our atmosphere is comprised of oxygen and nitrogen in their gaseous form. As the solar wind makes its way into our atmosphere, it excites the gas and increases its energy. With more energy, it jumps up to a higher energy level and then releases that energy in the form of a photon or particle of light. Then it can drop down to a lower energy level. When the gas releases the photon, we see that as the aurora. Now when viewing the aurora, a few different colors can be seen. Each gas in our atmosphere gives off its own color. Oxygen gives off green and red light, as nitrogen gives off blue and purple. If you're trying to view it, the best time to see the aurora in the northern hemisphere is from late September to late March. In the southern hemisphere, you can see the aurora australis during opposing months. I hope you learned a little bit about the aurora, and hopefully you'll get to see them sometime soon. Thanks for watching.